This automatic lawn mowing robot cost me $2,800. $100. And you see, it has just a couple flaws. And in today's video, I am gonna fix one of those flaws. Now, in order for me to tell you about the flaw on the lawn mowing robot, let me give you an example with this robot right here. This guy right here is the $1,400 Roborock S7 Max V. And you see this thing right here? This is a camera. Something you should have on every single robot that needs to be monitored. Well, Luba doesn't have one. And at double the price, you would think this 40 pound monstrosity of a robot would have a camera. What do you see here? There's no camera. Cause guess where it is? It's not there. I mean, really, don't get me wrong. This thing in one single season has already saved me $600 by not having to pay for a lawn mowing service. I love this thing, but you know, I could love it just a little bit more. So let's get started. Because I'm trying to get millimeter level precision, I am going to have to 3D scan the Luba body. And that 3D scan is going to be directly imported into Fusion 360 so that I do not have to measure anything on the body. In fact, if I tried to manually measure these curves, it would likely be impossible for me to get this part to flushly mount to the body panels. And that doesn't even take into account for the fact that it would take many, many additional hours to model this part. Today I'm scanning with the Revapoint Range 3 scanner and I chose to use this scanner in particular because it is designed for objects that are about the size of Luba all the way up to full size cars. And that's very important for me because losing track on this scan would result in poor geometry when I go to mesh the points and I need millimeter level precision. First. I've got my scan brought into the computer and there's some editing that has to be done. First, we need to fuse all these points together. So I'm just gonna go with all the basic stuff. So uh, I'm gonna fuse at 0.71 millimeters. And what you're gonna see when this pops out is a significantly cleaner model. Now you can see we have some defining features here. You can see right here is the rain sensor. You've got a few buttons here, the stop button. Pretty much the only thing here that we actually need to maintain are these four sensors and then the rain sensor kind of square on my screen. I'm gonna grab this tool and we are going to snip off all of these points, do a delete. We're gonna do the same thing over here. I want that sensor on top, do a delete. Same thing over here. I want that sensor on bottom, do a delete. And then again, do a delete. Now, if we zoom in, we can see, oh, we still got some points down there that didn't go away, delete that. All right, now this is the only thing that we're left with and this is all we need. So before I let Live Jerry take over, I wanna first apologize because somehow my Fusion 360 window got compressed in recording and you guys can't see all of it. And I'm not really sure how that happened, but I do apologize. Now, the first thing I'm doing here is importing that edited scanned mesh into Fusion 360 so I can do some operations on it. Now I will let myself take over to me. So at this point, I'm gonna right click on the plane, create a sketch, and over here, I am going to create a rectangle. I'm not 100% sure of the goal here yet. This is a first iteration. Uh, you know, 34 millimeters, uh, an inch is 24.4 millimeters. So this is 34 is about an inch and a half. Um, so I think 30 is gonna be fine and sufficient. We definitely don't need it to be this long. Um, I don't want it to shake around and move. So I actually am going to utilize these sensors in a way as kind of keying this mount onto Luba. It will be double stick taped onto Luba, but the keying is going to be very important. Q on the keyboard, that's going to bring up the extrude menu. And this only needs to be about an inch long, not even. Uh, it just needs to go all the way through. Okay, let's do split body this. And then our splitting tool is going to be the actual Luba itself, click OK. And what we're gonna be left with, you see, we now have something that was perfectly contoured to the Luba itself. And if I print this out, it should theoretically fit right on. And you see, I should have just simply listened to myself because yes, in theory, if I printed that, it would have just worked. But I can't just listen to myself, I have to go above and beyond, and then I spent an extra 30 minutes 
doing more work to this model that was completely and entirely wrong. But in either case, I went on to design more of the model, so here you go. I want to flip this back over onto the top, and I want to also bring back my Luba. So now that we successfully fit this onto the Luba itself, we need to create the platform to actually connect the camera. I'm gonna create a uh, an offset plane. So two inches above is roughly 50 millimeters. Create a sketch. And I want to create a square that is going to be an 80 millimeter by 80 millimeter square. A box roughly two inches above, that's 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters. I can select this and this and I can create a loft. And this is how we will now connect everything we need onto Luba. So of course I do a little bit of cleanup work, adding some fillets onto this model, but then I send it over to Bamboo Studio and I sync this thing into the build plate because the only thing that I want to print is the part that attaches to Luba to see if it fits. For anyone that's still here in the video now, I appreciate your viewership. You guys don't know how much it means to me. It keeps my motivation going to see all of you guys enjoy the content. So guys, if you could please leave a like if you enjoy the video, and if you get anything valuable out of this, go ahead and drop a subscription because I have so much more content coming just like this. So this is the first prototype that I made. I obviously didn't want to print anything more because I don't want to waste material if it wasn't going to fit properly. And good thing I didn't because it doesn't fit properly. Around these arches, as you can see, there's a little bitty gap. Now on one side of the sensors, it fits pretty well, but on the other side of the sensors, it doesn't fit as well. And I just simply overlooked something. So that's going to be the first thing to fix. So let's go build upon this and try and make it fit the sensors just a little bit better. So this might not look like much of a change, but this is a completely different component than this. Because the way that the sensors are designed, this side of the sensor is elevated in height more so than this side. So I need to, of course, account for that in order to actually have this uh, sensor mount fit perfectly and not come loose. So now that I know the Luba connection point fits well, I went ahead and printed this entire model. And what I'm looking for here is to see if the accessory attachment plate is an appropriate shape and size. And from what I see here, I am happy, so it is time to move on to the final design. Here I am tweaking that model. I decided I wanted the pegboard layout to be a five by five, three millimeter grid, and there needs to be a way to mount accessories to that. So I add a through hole in order to gain access to both sides and definitely don't think that i'm gonna forget to add the fillets because this thing needs to look good now the mount with the pegboard adapter is done and of course i already tested the height of this thing I already tested the mounting features it's good i'm happy with the pegboard it is hard to put your fingers in here to screw screws in but that's expected. So this thing is fantastic. It's time to go design a way to actually mount the camera to the pegboard. I already mocked up a general idea of what I want here, but this is not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to defer to a little bit of a different method here, but I think it's gonna work just fine because we're not dealing with high stress. Mount, mounting plate doesn't give me much to work with. So we're gonna make a 60 by 60 box here and we're going to extrude this out five millimeters let's do the let's do the rails so my rails need to be uh i'm gonna make them 50 millimeters long and five millimeters high our screw diameter is five millimeters down and we're gonna go two object to the bottom here okay now we are all the way through 45 so half of 45 we need a 45 millimeter diameter circle now if we show the Luba again, you can see how this is gonna mount on there. Ultimately, this is gonna be the final design. Once I print this in a more UV tolerant filament, we have the pegboard style design up here. We have the Blink X-T2 adapter in order to actually mount to the pegboard. 
We have the Blink X-T2 mount that comes with the camera from the factory and once we attach a camera on here, stick this thing on Luba, we now have remote viewing access to Luba anywhere we want. Because I don't have the final print completed in PETG, I'm not gonna fully adhere this example to Luba, so the sample tape amount will do, but this is what the final installation is gonna look like. Once the Snow White PETG prints are completed, this model will blend in and it will look like it was installed from factory. Now if you guys happen to be interested in this model for yourself, I have a link to it in the description down below. And even if you don't have a 3D printer, guys, I have something just for you. The sponsor of today's video is PCBWay, and trust me, you're going to want to hear this. You see, their name implies that they only manufacture PCBs, but that can't be further from the truth. They can also do CNC work as well as 3D printing, and they don't only print your standard PLAs and other kinds of plastics. They can also print PA12 nylon powder better than anyone else on the market, and they can print all kinds of metals. For your basic needs, they can easily print this part in PETG or ABS plastic so it can be UV tolerant. And it cannot be made any easier. If you guys are interested, click the link in the description below, head over to their website and create an account. After you create an account, go ahead and upload your file to their website. They're gonna ask you what kind of material that you would like to print this part. Click either PETG or ABS and then send that part off to be printed they're gonna get to work and print your part in a very quick one week or two week time span that part is gonna be at your door ready for you to install it on your Luba oh and one more thing this light is really really blinding me so I'm gonna go ahead and block it with a video and I think it's actually a video that you need to go ahead and click on and watch right now so yeah no right right now yeah click on it right now